Today, we're going to talk about the Republicans' long-awaited Twitter Hunter Biden expose and how Donald Trump inadvertently screwed his own party over in response to it. And I interview Republican strategist and advisor to a number of Republicans, including John McCain and Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mike Murphy, about whether Trump validating someone like Kanye may actually bring him down, how to pry the GOP out of the hands of the crazies, and why he doesn't just vote for Democrats to exercise the MAGA wing from the GOP. I'm Brian Teller Cohen, and you're watching No Lie. So there was a time when politics was about important stuff, and uh, then there's weeks like the one we just had. Elon Musk amped up the long-awaited release of information detailing how Twitter censored a New York Post story about Hunter Biden. Uh, The actual quote-unquote reporting was done via Twitter thread by a guy named Matt Taibbi, basically laying out how both Twitter prevented the dissemination of a story about Hunter Biden's laptop and how the Biden team had a communication line to Twitter open and had requested certain tweets be taken down. Now, on the Hunter Biden laptop, I'm not too intimately familiar with this because Hunter Biden is a private citizen, and so I'm not especially concerned with what is on a private citizen's laptop. Um, I also have a brain and recognize that the whole point of this story is to find something to attack Joe Biden for. Republicans do not care about the business dealings of the adult children of presidents. If they did, they'd have said a single word about how Jared and Ivanka made over $100 million while Trump was in the White House, including $3.9 million from Ivanka's stake in the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. They'd have said a word about how Ivanka had been granted 23 trademarks from the Chinese government during Trump's term, about Ivanka using the White House to hawk branded products, including when a press release was issued to journalists promoting her $10,800 gold bracelet about how Don Jr. and Eric controlled the Trump organization during Trump's term, which they pledged would have no new foreign deals while their dad was in office, only to then sell more than $100 million worth of real estate, including a $33 million stake in a federally subsidized housing complex, which had to be approved by HUD Secretary Ben Carson, $3.5 million worth of land in the Dominican Republic, and more than a $1 billion worth of luxury residential units in India built by the Trump org. So look, if Hunter did something wrong, then he should be held accountable, just like if anyone does something wrong, they should be held accountable. But spare me the sanctimony over the right's newfound obsession with investigating the children of politicians because it rings about as false as it gets. Now, as for Biden's team's involvement, first of all, the right went nuts claiming that they finally had evidence of the government violating First Amendment rights by censoring a story. Elon Musk took to Twitter in a fury of vindication and tweeted, if this isn't a violation of the Constitution's First Amendment, what is? And in response to him asking what is, I'd say probably something that actually is a violation of the First Amendment, because this quite literally is not a violation of the First Amendment. The First Amendment deals with the government suppressing free speech. Twitter is not the government. It is a private platform. In case anyone thought that being a billionaire meant that you're brilliant, Elon is doing everyone a public service by debunking that myth. But hold on, because then the right was like, well, the government still colluded with Twitter to suppress suppress free speech, even if they didn't do it directly. And again comes Elon Musk, expert on all things constitutional, tweeting, Twitter acting by itself to suppress free speech is not a First Amendment violation, but acting under orders from the government to suppress the speech with no judicial review is. Only small problem. This whole Twitter saga took place in the summer of 2020 when Joe Biden was a candidate and the president was Donald Trump. So Twitter was not acting under orders from the government unless Donald Trump demanded that Twitter remove the Hunter Biden story. And finally, in terms of what the Biden team actually did ask Twitter to take down, some of the tweets are archived, so you could actually see for yourself what they are. They are naked photos of Hunter Biden, which unto itself is against Twitter's terms of service anyway. That's the big scandal. Conservatives are pointing to the Biden team making an extremely normal request to take down nude photos of Hunter and Twitter obliging because they pose a policy violation. So yeah, um, to summarize, Twitter was acting under orders from the government, except Biden wasn't president in 2020. And it's a First Amendment violation, except Twitter can't violate the First Amendment because it's a private business. And the takedown requests were evidence of collusion between Twitter and Team Biden, except they were nudes, which were against Twitter's terms of service. But, uh... Other than that, total home run. In reality, conservatives are all pretending that this is a scandal in order to create one. And this isn't new, right? Like we've dealt with this with uh, Hillary's emails, for example, which conservatives collectively pretended was the biggest national security lapse in American history. And then when Ivanka sent government emails from her private server when she worked in the White House, it came and went like a fart in a hurricane. But the right is very, very good at collectively pretending that a nothing burger is a huge deal and then manipulating their audience into believing it and then complaining when the liberal media doesn't report on it until they inevitably do. And already we're up to that point. Some uh, conservative tweeted, 
There is not one single article about Elon Musk or the Twitter releases last night on the New York Times app this morning. And Elon responded, saying, that is because the New York Times has become, for all intents and purposes, an unregistered lobbying firm for far-left politicians. This is what's normal now. Republicans bullying outlets into buying into a manufactured scandal, and if and when they do, they use that buy-in as validation of their own bogus story. But this um, tired Hunter Biden bullshit aside, here's the most incredible part of all of this. The very next morning after this Twitter stuff happened, Trump took to Truth Social, referencing this Twitter saga, saying that the Democrats were working with big tech and that, quote, do you throw the presidential election results of 2020 out and declare the rightful winner, or do you have a new election? A massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles even those found in the Constitution. So Trump calls for a termination of the Constitution and all of those Republicans who had a collective meltdown over some tortured, inaccurate reading of the First Amendment didn't say a word. Not one Republican who'd spent all night losing their mind over their precious First Amendment could bring themselves to speak up when the entire Constitution, which includes the First Amendment, was disregarded by Trump. Pretty amazing stuff. Like, I guess the Constitution is only worth protecting when they can pretend that a private company and a political campaign are somehow misconstrued to mean the entire government. And that's to say nothing of the danger of Trump, the leader of the Republican Party, fresh off his dinner with Kanye West, the guy who this week said the words, I love Hitler, now coming out against the U.S. Constitution. So I guess the lesson here, which I should have learned years ago and yet somehow still haven't, is that there is no floor, there will never be a floor, and they will always find a way to surprise us in the worst way. This is the same party that was repudiated in the midterms for being too extreme, now, yet again, doubling and tripling down on that same extremism. To say that they've learned nothing is the understatement of the century, and as long as they want to do it, I think it's incumbent upon the rest of us to call it out. Here's a preview of my interview with Republican strategist Mike Murphy. I'm going to ask, ask this question knowing full well that this is my Democratic fever dream uh, <laughs> that I'm going to impose onto you. But if you're a never Trump Republican and your party's been hijacked by the crazies, Marjorie Taylor Greens and Lauren Boeberts and the Donald Trumps out there, why not support Democrats and hasten the demise of the GOP so that there is as big a repudiation of the MAGA crazies as possible so that there can be a clear reckoning and, and a reset? Like, if, if you have a cancer and you don't exercise the whole thing, then the cancer is going to come back. So why not just hasten the demise of, the, uh, of, of what is kind of pulling the party down? No, it's a very good question. I mean, I voted for Joe Biden and I was public about it. Um, I sent money to people like uh, uh, Senator Kelly in Arizona uh, and uh, Adam Frisch, who ran against crazy uh, Boebert in Colorado. Boebert. I've been openly supporting of, of many. I'm, I, I run the Gina Raimundo fan club. Right. But the problem is most of us who got into this actually have policy views. And so I'm a conservative. And so I, I don't like some of the Democratic policy. I think it's terrible for the people they're trying to help. So it's hard for me just to say, all right, Team Democrat, we're going to pass a lot of terrible policy and therefore I'm indirectly hurting Trump. I mean, I generally will not personally vote or support any big wackadoodle, but that doesn't mean I'm like switching over. I'm, I'm staying in the party to try to bring down the bad guys and then then move forward and, 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 and be in the fight for more more opportunity-based policies. I, I can't go full Dem. I hold my nose and vote for a bunch because I get the present danger, but you're just not going to get a bunch of conservatives to 100% jump on the Biden train. Now, if Biden had not done his FDR 2.0 deal when he first got elected, because he ran as kind of the comfortable old shoe, moderate, he wasn't for the loony stuff in the primary, he wasn't for the single-payer healthcare system, then he got in and some staffer had a PowerPoint, you can be FDR. And he went lurching over, not enough for the crazy progressives on his side, but old center Joe got evaporated with some of these incredibly um, expensive and ambitious plans. I mean, hell, the, the infrastructure bill and the chips deal, those are two huge legit accomplishments. Though nobody knows about them because instead it was that massive spending bill, as you've probably heard on hacks, I like to say, because it's true, that his original architecture was in real dollars the same as the cost of the Second World War. Yeah. Hard to get conservatives on board that because we think it's a disaster. Let me, let me, let me like. But if I, Biden was more like Gina Raimondo on the business wing of the Democratic Party, they'd get me. Yeah. 
Well, let me let me push back and let me ask like yeah. if you're looking at if you're looking and this is this is com- coming from me as a progressive who very much enjoys all of, you know, the spending and the accomplishments that we're seeing right, right sure. now, but if you're seeing a lot of a lot of these accomplishments bear themselves out, if you're seeing, you know, over 10 and a half million jobs that have been added, unemployment staying at record low numbers, we have the Chips Act which like you mentioned has brought, you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs, billions Real of dollars break. of yeah. investments. Right. Up, infrastructure getting upgraded. We have the government that's allowed to negotiate lower drug prices for the first time in forever. We have this gun safety bill that keeps guns out of the hands of domestic abusers and expands background checks for young people, funds state uh, red flag laws. Like you have a bunch of good, uh, good legislation that that brings down costs for middle class Americans. That uh, finally, you know, brings money into uh, uh, allocates money toward climate change. Like all of this stuff that is necessary and that's popular with two thirds to three quarters of Americans. I'm just curious how you look at that and 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 kind of um, recoil at those things because. Well, no, no. I but the thing is, I can't I can't eat the steak and not also think about the dead cow. So a lot of that, I, I love the chips bill. I like the buy, and that was bipartisan. I, I like some of the bipartisan stuff. I don't, I mean, you're doing the smart campaign thing, which you tick off all the gumdrops that sound fantastic. On the other hand, massive spending. Now we have massive inflation. Inflation is extremely painful to people. Well, you, I mean, so I think I, it's, I, a, I, would, I mean, I we're not going to agree on economics, but. Of course, of course. I would push back and say every country around the world has inflation. And a lot of those countries, especially if you look into Europe, have higher inflation, inflation than the U.S. So if we're able to to maintain parity yeah. with those places in Europe, for example, but we've got an infrastructure bill, we've got climate spending, we've got right. uh, a, a raft right. of a raft of that stuff to show for it. Then, we, then yes, but in, in, you know, inflation isn't something that comes like a hurricane. It's created by monetary and fiscal policy. And the Republicans have lost their way on this too, by the way. I'm not particularly happy with the Republican appropriators who are mad dogs. Trump spent more than Obama. Obama was the world champ of breaking the budget. Now, now Biden's breaking the Trump record. So, you know, macro fiscal policy counts to me and it drives inflation. So the fact that Democrats, excuse me, the fact that Europeans have failed doesn't excuse our failure in fiscal policy because everybody's opened up that we're in a whole new era of, of, you know, all artificially low interest rates. Well, now guess what? It's caught up. And so that's why we're getting crunched. Now, I I, I get your point, though. Um, but then what I'd say is, why can the French, God love them, build a mile of, of highway uh, at roughly 25% our cost? You know, I mean, and there's, a, it's very hard to build highway in the U.S. because of Davis-Bacon, which requires literally union caterers, you know. Uh, we can argue this stuff all day. Bottom line is I'm a conservative. I applaud some of what Biden's done. I voted for him. If the election is Trump and Biden, I'll vote for him again. But the Democrats in a tribal world are not going to poll and even I'll say more centrist Republicans without a more fiscally conservative agenda. And the only way they may get some is if Trump is the nominee again, which could happen. But otherwise, you're going to see a snapback. And, and you, you know, you had said it can happen. And, and this is what I had spoken to uh, Alex about last week, um, who I know you know well. And, uh, and that is that, you know, until we see some reason that Trump wouldn't be the nominee the next go around, because everybody loves to, to grant DeSantis the heir apparency. But, but until someone um, kills Trump, he ain't going to die. And so well, I think uh, Trump is killing himself. Where do you see if it's fatal or not? Yeah. All right. Well, that's the we, question of the next election. And you can argue away. I'll just say from doing this 30 years, the conventional wisdom machine always has inertia for what happened last time. Trump won in 16. So Trump will win again. Uh, politics is very dynamic. It's always changing. And I, I tell my Repo- my Democratic friends, don't fall into a warm, happy bubble that, oh, it's going to be Trump and then we win for free because, uh, you know, life is seldom that nice. To check out the full interview with Mike Murphy, click the thumbnail right here on the screen or check out the interviews playlist on my YouTube channel. 